Hello everyone, today I'm here to do my July wrap up. I read nine books this month, which is a lot for me, a lot. I can't even tell you the last time I read nine books in a month. It probably has at least been a couple years. I read all adult books with the exception of one this month. And the reason for that is because the first two books I read were adult this month. And I thought, hey, why not just make it a challenge and challenge myself to read all the adult books? And I did, I'm so very proud of myself. Is that okay to say that I did it? That's crazy. Who am I? Has an alien taken over my body? I'm not sure. The first one I want to talk about is actually a reread for me. So I read nine books plus one reread. This book is also a reread and is the only YA book I read this month and that is Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows. I finally finished listening to it. If you didn't know it was like my, my one of my goals over the past like three years to finally reread the Harry Potter series because, because before booktube I reread Harry Potter all the time but it's been five years since I've reread them. I decided to do it this year and I decided to listen to them and it has been such an amazing. This got to be my second favorite book after The Prisoner of Azkaban. I was just, my heart was like palpitating the whole time. Even though I, I knew, even though I knew what was going to happen, I was still so nervous. I'm like, what's going to happen? But I knew what was going to happen, obviously. But it's just amazing when you reread things that you thought you knew so well and you learn all these new things and you forgot all these things and you it's like reading it for the first time. So I loved revisiting it so much. I'm so so very sad I'm done listening to them because listening to them has been such an amazing experience and I think every two or three years I'm going to re-listen to the series over again so revisit Harry Potter as much as I can. So yeah, I loved listening to this so much. I have to say it about it other than this. It was just amazing and everything first one I read this month was The Singles Game by Lauren Weisenberg. This is an adult chiclet novel. This is all about a girl who is a tennis player and she has an injury and she decides to hire a new coach, a, a guy coach that's really hard and tough and he wants to change her image like instead of being this sweet you know girl next door to be this like vixen and like fierce competitor and it's all about her journey through that you know changing her image through tennis and just becoming more and more tennis like you know to crack the top 10 leaderboard. I really like this book. It got you really back into like the world of tennis like you know with Wimbledon and all the strict rules and you know it was a fast quick chiclet read. At four out of five it's just a quick fast fun read I'd say. Definitely perfect for a summer read but summer's ending soon so if you want a good summer read shut this one out. The next book I read was The Hypnotist Love Story by Liam Moriarty and I actually have a matchup review on these two books so if you want to check that out I will link it down below and there will be a card right up here. I've read a lot of Liam Moriarty books this year and this is definitely my least favorite I've ever read by hers. Granted I still have two more to read and then I will be done like I will be current up to date with all of Liam Moriarty's book but I don't know I really did not enjoy this. It's literally what the title says. It's about this hypnotist and she falls in love with this guy who has an ex who has an ex-girlfriend who's stalking him and it was just very if I could define this book more it would be boring. And Moriarty really writes a story that will wrap you in. You can read her very quickly. You'll find that if you start one of her books you probably finish in two days. I did get involved with the story but after I was done with it I was just like it, I didn't feel like I gained anything from reading this. It was kind of boring. The love was boring. I just the only interesting part of this was the stalker and other than that it was just boring. It was okay. I gave it a 3 out of 5. I probably give it a 2 out of 5 but I gave it 3 because I did finish it fast. It did keep me captivated but at the end of the day I just didn't love it. I just really did. The next book I read is The Coincidence of Coconut Cake by Amy E. Reichardt. I hope I said that right. This is another book that kind of left me uh, it was okay. It wasn't that great. I I thought I was gonna like this one a lot more because the reviews on it are really good. They were saying it was kind of got that you got mail vibe. And all about the chef. Her name's Lou, and she owns a restaurant. And things are going okay for her. She's engaged. And then one day she finds her fiance cheating on her. So that's not great. Then she goes to work at a restaurant, and she cooks horribly. And she, little does she know, there's this reviewer out there who's reviewing her food. And of course, she gets the worst review ever. And somehow they meet and strike up this romance. And they don't really know each other is technically like he doesn't know that she's the chef he doesn't know that she's a reviewer so that's where you get the you got mail vibes from but I found that just kind of ugh. I did like the aspect of it it was it takes place in Milwaukee and throughout this whole book she takes my adventures in Milwaukee with food and stuff and it was great and I really want to visit Milwaukee because of it but other than that I just found it kind of it was okay it wasn't like amazing it didn't wow me it was just 
an okay book. So I give this one again a 3 out of 5. The next book I read is The Husband's Secret by Leah Moriarty. I read three Leah Moriarty books as well, so just just get ready. This is hands down my favorite Leah Moriarty book by far, and I'm not surprised about that at all because whenever you think of this author, the first book that you'll hear about is The Husband's Secret. And I don't know why I waited so long to read it. It takes place mainly from three points of views. You get Cecilia who finds this letter that her husband had wrote, and it says, do not open till the events after my death. And of course, it gets and then it involves this woman named Tess whose marriage is kind of crumbling and this woman named Rachel who has lost her daughter and she still believes that the murder is out there. So somehow these three women's lives tie up and you know events happen and stuff. Like I said I really did like this book. The only downfall is the first hundred pages were very slow. I almost put this down a couple times because I didn't feel like the plot was progressing at all. I felt like this needs to get more interesting soon and after a hundred pages it did. This book is amazing just for the last two pages. I know you're crazy. It's crazy but believe you me it is amazing those last two pages. Overall like I said this is my favorite book of hers by far. I haven't read any I haven't rated any of her books five stars so my highest ratings are four out of five. We're getting strict on this one I give it a four and a half out of five I think it would get a full five out of five if it wasn't for that really slow beginning because it was it was a very slow beginning the next book I read is the silent sister by Dan by Diane Chamberlain this mystery slash thriller novel all about this girl who has always believed that her sister has committed suicide when she's very young and then her dad passes away many years later and she's getting his affairs in order at the house and she finds some evidence that proves maybe her sister really didn't commit suicide after all and maybe she's still out there so that's what this whole thing's about I think I went into this expecting more of a thriller aspect and it definitely wasn't it had like a little tiny thing of mystery and it was more about like the family drama not to say it's not bad at all but I I found this book okay. I know I, I rated it originally on Goodreads 4 out of 5, but as I think about it, I think I now would probably do it like a three and a half. It was okay book. It was an okay book. It didn't really wow me. I didn't really like the ending at all. I didn't feel like there was enough resolution at the end, honestly. Maybe I read it. It's definitely, you know, a good like light mystery novel. Nothing that'll keep you up at night scared or anything, but it wasn't my favorite of the month, that's for sure. My favorite book of the month it should be no surprise because I've been talking about this a lot and that is Vicious by V.E. Schwab. It's all about two guys named Victor and Eli and they are on their final year at medical school and they have to make this thesis. He decides to make his thesis about EOs, extraordinaries, and discovering like how they become that and if there are any out there and Victor decides to take it one step further and say and says hey you know why not try to make ourselves one and so that happens and then there's two different timelines going on so you have that going on while they're doing that research and you know another timeline 10 years later when Victor breaks out of prison and he is on the hunt for Eli so obviously his lot a lot has happened and a huge mystery is up in the air and this was such an amazing book. It is a quintessential book for heroes versus villains, right versus wrong, good versus bad. It's almost like a book about bad versus bad because these guys are kind of almost like villains. Like you know you'll be rooting for one throughout the book and you'll change your mind and you'll be like it just flip-flops. This was such an amazing book. The writing in it was beautiful. I just, everything about it was beautiful. So I highly recommend you check this book out. It just was amazing and I'm so happy to have read it. If you want reviews on these last three books I mentioned, so The Husband's Secret, Silent Sister, and this, I have done three mini reviews on each of these, which are under five minutes and no spoilers at all. So yeah, definitely check those out because who doesn't love a good spoiler-free review? Obviously, I give this one a five out of five. Obviously. The next book I read is The Woman in Cabin 10 by Ruth Ware. This is a, another mystery slash thriller novel and it's definitely more of a thriller mystery type of thing than The Silent Sister. This is all about this woman named Lo who is a travel journalist and she gets the opportunity to review this luxury cruise line called the Aurora. One night she's late up at night. There's a body being thrown overboard into the water. She tells people and people don't believe her and then what's even creepier is that all the guests and crew are accounted for. She's like there's somebody out there doing this and she's trying to prove that this had happened that she's not being delusional and stuff like that so I really did like this book this one didn't really scare me it definitely had the, its moments but I would say it's more of a claustrophobia scare <laughs> but um overall I did like this book the ending was really awesome I wish it had a little bit more resolution than ending but if you're looking for a good thriller mystery type of novel I highly recommend this one especially if you're new to it because I'm not good with scary books I'm really taking a huge dive into thrillers this year and 
so I'm easing my way in really and this was a great book for it. it didn't like scare me or keep me up late at night I give this book a four out of five the next book I read is actually a new adult book I consider it kind of adult that is it ends with us by Colleen Hoover like I said this is a new adult book and this is about a girl named Lily who gets into a relationship with this neurosurgeon named Ryle and he's very arrogant and cocky I hope this doesn't spoil anything but I think this should be mentioned because I think it could be a trigger warning for people this does deal with domestic violence and abuse so just know that going into it that's all I'm gonna say about it because I don't want to spoil you but I just want you to know exactly what you're getting into before this book this is my favorite Colleen Hoover book I haven't read all her books because she's written a lot but I've read like maybe three or four but I have Colleen Hoover's even a hit or a miss for me her last two books have been a hit for me I've liked them a lot but some of her other ones I haven't really enjoyed this one had a huge emotional impact on me I really felt like it was much more emotional than her other previous books and she really wrote it well and I think the story is very personal to her and I just really enjoyed it I think she captured this whole you know horrible situation very well and she brought a new light on the subjects and it made me really ponder about things especially in this especially in this book about different characters so I highly recommend it if you are very wary about Colleen Hoover and you're like oh, I don't know if I like her I think this would be a great book because it was definitely more emotional this was more of a character driven book to me usually I think her books are more about relationship stuff not to say this one isn't because obviously it is but I feel like it's a little bit more character driven which I really liked I thought it was amazing and this. So I give this book a 4 out of 5. Like I said, this is my favorite Colin Hoover book and I'm really happy I read it. The last book I read, I actually just finished it like a couple days ago, and it's a brand new spank book, and that is Truly Madly Guilty by Leanne Moriarty. This is her new release that just came out literally less than a week ago, and I had to pick it up on the day of, and I had to start reading it the day of. I didn't really enjoy it that much. I just felt this one was kind of lacking for me. In more particular, the characters were just... I didn't like really any of them. They all had their really big faults, and they were pretty big faults. And yeah, this is all about a barbecue that has gone wrong. You're following three different couples, so you're following a lot of different storylines. And already really has this whole thing down packed of like there's this event that happens at the beginning of the book, and something terrible has happened, and you know that. You take the whole book and the whole like you take the whole book to read and finally figure out what happens at the end. And with this one, I didn't really feel like it was like a like big mystery of that. I didn't feel like that was like, especially in Big Little Lies was a good one and Husband Secrets. Those two were great like the whole mystery throughout the ride and the ending really paid off. This one I felt like didn't. This was more to me a book about family complexity and drama and you know different things like marriage and I talked about I IVF in this and other different situations which she does write well but I felt like it was a little bit too much and I really wanted to get more into the mystery and I, you know maybe she should break away from the whole huge event at the end and maybe she just straight up write a thriller. I totally read a thriller by her because I think she'd do great at it but like I said this wasn't my favorite of hers not to say it's my least favorite. I could rank her books it'd be The Husband's Secret, What Alice Forgot, Big Little Lies, then this one and then The Hypnotist Love Stories. This one I think I'd give it a three and a half out of five maybe 3.75 if I'm being super picky but yeah I liked it I didn't love it all of her books I get sucked in and I cannot stop reading it I read this in like three freaking days I just can't stop reading it these books are like freaking cracked to me for some reason tell me I'm, I'm please tell me I'm not the only one that feels that way and hail her books like candy like it's just ridiculous so it wasn't my favorite book but I'm happy to have read it because I think I have two more books to read with this author it's go time. I gotta read those two other books this year. Anyway, that was my wrap up. I cannot believe I read that many books. I hope that August will be a great reading month for me. Who knows? Let's just hope. If you have read any of these books, please let me know your thoughts down in the comments down below. I would love to hear your thoughts and opinions on any of these books or any books like kind of relating to this. And what did you read this month? Did you have a really good reading month or a not so good reading month? And in this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and hit subscribe and I will see you in my next video. Bye. Thought you'd like to know to get along